Thank you, Senator Reed. Uh, Senator Inhofe has stepped out for a few moments and asked me to preside uh, for a, a few moments. General Miller, let me begin with you, and certainly thank you for your, your four decades plus of service. Um, let's talk about amphibious ship procurement and the current uh, budget proposal. I was heartened to hear Admiral Richardson say that the budget submission is an opportunity for a bit of discussion about some of these issues. Um, the, the Navy deferred LPD procurement to 2021 and LHA procurement to 2024, um, saying that in pursuing the National Defense Strategy priorities, it was unable to take advantage of last year's addition of advanced procurement funding for either uh, FY 2020 LPD or an adjustment to the LHA. Uh, does the Marine Corps still have a stated need for 38 amphibious ships as indicated in the force structure assessment? Yes, Senator. And do we have those 38 ships today? No, we do not. Um, do you foresee eliminating the Marine Corps' core mission of amphibious operations at any point in the future, uh, for example, in a potential uh, conflict with China or Russia, would our amphibious Marine Corps likely play a key role? Based on the plans I've seen, I would say yes, but it's more than that. It, I think we have to look at the ability to come from the sea with the Navy as part of a maritime strategy, and I think the CNO and I are aligned with that. Um, so yes, they would be part of that planning and in those operations. Okay, and let me just ask you then how the um, uh, how the F thirty five exercise went recently. The Essex Amphibious Ready Group and the Thirteenth Marine Expeditionary Unit recently completed the first combat deployment of the F thirty five Joint Strike Fighter. During this deployment, the F thirty five saw action in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Syria. How does the F-35 expand the effectiveness of U.S. amphibious forces, and what did we learn about the F-35's logistical and material footprint aboard the USS Essex that can be applied to future uh, iterations of large deck amphibious ships, sir? Senator, I have not received the after action from the 13th MU. I expect to get that within the next week. I can tell you that the, the material readiness of the airplane while they were deployed was uh, exceeded what I expected. Uh, they averaged uh, about above 70% readiness. At some point, actually in one month, they were close to 80. They had six jets aboard the aircraft. They did operate in the airspace above Afghanistan and, uh, and Syria. Um, so their material readiness was good. There are actually where there are lessons learned as far as uh, the aviation maintenance on board ship and the things you have to do, uh, but they set themselves for, up for success. They, had a, they did a good job on the parts block and they did a good job bringing experienced maintainers. Uh, it's a bigger jet than we're used to, so there is some deck handling things that have to go. So all that stuff will come out. As far as the capability, as far as information and the passage of information and what they were able to do and not do, uh, that's what I'm looking forward to here in, in the after action brief. And when do you overall, think it was in the next week, and I believe they will be up on the Hill to brief also, Senator. But overall, it's a positive. It was, it was material readiness was the thing we were concerned with, uh, being away from a home base, and the material readiness was uh, excellent. Great. And, and I think uh, Senator Reed, in his opening statement, mentioned that he'd like to have a comment at some point about how uh, not refueling the Truman is consistent with uh, our goal of 355 ships. But let me ask this question instead, Secretary Spencer, um, and it's re with regard to the amphibs. Last month during the Sea Power Subcommittee hearing on Navy shipbuilding programs, I asked Secretary Gertz if instead of deferring procurement to 2021 and 2024, could the Navy apply incremental funding to the LPD and LHA in FY20, he said the Navy could apply incremental funding to the LPD and LHA in FY20 if authorized to do so by Congress. So I'll ask you the same question. Could the Navy apply incremental funding to the LPD and LHA in FY20 as author if authorized by Congress? And if Congress approves incremental funding in the FY20 NDAA for the LHA and LPD, would that allow the Navy to accelerate how it spends the $350 million 
that was appropriated in FY19. Yes, Senator, if in fact uh, you authorize uh, and appropriate uh, our, our, our authorities to go forward with the funding, uh, yes, the answer is undoubtedly. Thank you very, very much. Well, we're certainly going to pursue that, and I appreciate the, um, the candor of our witnesses today. Senator Shaheen.